video today. If you guys like these videos, please be sure to give them a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel. Also, find us over on Instagram at Ag Aviation Adventures, where you can constantly be updated with stories and photos. If you've noticed in the past, if you're not new to the channel, uh, I usually end up spraying in a lot of different states throughout the summer. I'm located in Minnesota, but I'm right on the border, only a, about a mile from the North Dakota border. So I end up spraying in the summer a lot between Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and then I also go down to Iowa. So what's required when you're traveling like that? Well, I have to be licensed in each state. Not licensed for the flying portion as far as having a pilot's license, because that's good in all the states. However, the chemical applicator's license for applying pesticide, that is what I need to be licensed in in each state. And it does reciprocate with some states, however, not all states. My residency or where I'm a resident is the state of Colorado. And with Minnesota, they do not accept the license that I have in Colorado. They don't accept that for Minnesota. So because I'm not a resident of Minnesota, that's why they don't. But what that means is that I have to go and take a test. Uh, the flying test I have to take every year. And then I also have a general core test as well as a test test. Um, so it's I think it's categories A and B is what it's considered, I believe. And I have to take the A and B tests every three years. They expire. And the aerial test I have to take every year. Now, there is a way to get out of it. If I were to attend the Tri-State Convention, uh, that's the states of Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota, if I go to that convention, I can get credit for continuing education. And at that point, I don't have to retest. That fulfills my requirements. And you don't test. Um, the nice thing with Minnesota is that when I am licensed in Minnesota, that license will reciprocate with North Dakota, South Dakota, as well as Iowa. Now, uh, I'm from Indiana, and a couple of years ago I was out visiting in the winter, and I don't reciprocate with Indiana or Illinois, so when I was there, I went and tested for Indiana tests. And with that, uh, I believe, I think, don't quote me on it, but I think that would get me into Illinois as well with having that license. Also, besides having to be licensed in each state that I spray in as far as the pesticide goes, the aircraft also has to be re uh, registered in each, each state. And Iowa is kind of an expensive state to register the airplane in. This is an older airplane, late 90s. And still for this airplane, it's over $1,000 to register it in Iowa. And if you have a newer airplane, the newer it gets, the more expensive it gets to register it as well. I do believe, though, that the Iowa has a cap. I think it's $5,000, if I recall. Um, that is the maximum that they would charge you to register your aircraft there. So besides the registration, you also need insurance or a minimum amount of insurance. Um, a lot of these operators that I'll go and fly for or the co-ops, they want to know how much you're insured for to make sure that if something were to happen, if you were to drift or something like that, that you have the amount of insurance to cover that kind of stuff and it's not going to come back to them. So between all the states I fly in, that's kind of the general scoop of what's required to do that kind of stuff. 
If you guys have any questions about it, as always, leave them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Again, I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And follow us over on Instagram at Ag Aviation Adventures. Thanks again for watching. I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures. Fly low and fly fast.